What up, y'all? Y'all want to see how Creedmoor Fury deals with his Bermuda grass issue at the edge of his garden? I'm over here today just watering my plant starts. I got some brassicas out. All the cold weather stuff is outside. Turn you around and give you a view. We talked about how we harden our plants off if they happen to be in plant pots. You know, we, uh, we want to bring them outside and get them acclimated to the temperature, to the climate. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times we're starting them ahead of time indoors in the greenhouses and the high tunnels, low tunnels, you know, anywhere we can get an edge. I see them watering. And um, they got to come outside and be put in their places. So one of the things we've become accustomed to doing is taking them outside while they're still inside their plant pots and making these little pockets. Y'all know I'm always talking about soil pockets. But we'll make these little pockets in the soil. Those pockets are just large enough to go ahead and put the, uh, the plant pots in them. So before I show you how I manage the edge on my gardens and keep the Bermuda grass out, I'm going to turn you around and give you one of those little looks, okay? You can see exactly what I'm looking at. Then I'm going to show you how there's plenty of Bermuda grass over here, and um, it's not getting in my garden. I'm always hearing about folks are just so tore up about the fact that they just can't manage to beat Bermuda grass. For whatever reason, I think most of the time they struggle to beat Bermuda grass because they really don't understand what's at work. They don't understand that Bermuda grass doesn't do that well when it's shaded. It doesn't do that well when the rest of the world is hot and it's cold. That's why it doesn't grow in the winter. That's why it doesn't thrive in the winter. So if we can sort of put those things into play on behalf of the Bermuda grass, the Bermuda grass will start to weaken. You know? I'm always telling people, hey, if you got a real difficult time managing your Bermuda grass, you can always apply some form of silage to it. What's silage? Silage is what happens when we put some type of a rubber or a plastic sheet on the ground and it blocks light and it alters the temperature. In many cases, it'll raise soil temperatures, it'll raise the dirt temperatures, and that can be enough to extinguish some of the weeds on top. More often than not, it's not enough. I'll even make suggestions about using maybe some straight household um, apple cider vinegar or, or white vinegar, and that will stress it out. You can cover it up with some sheeting. You could stress it out cover it up with some wood chips. If it's not where you've got food growing, you could stress it out, I'm gonna say this specifically, and you could cover it with cardboard. We don't put cardboard where we grow food. Nothing anyone's gonna say is gonna change that, okay? So let's get back to the Bermuda grass. Um, I've talked about using a mechanical edger before. I did purchase one, it works great, love it. It has its time and its place to be used. But early spring and late winter, I like to cut my edges manually with a simple lawn edging tool. It's just a sharpened shovel, you know, a little curved edge, and um, I'll show you what it looks like in a second. And all I do is I cut and sever the rhizomes to the, to the Bermuda grass as it starts to grow closer to my garden, and then I simply edge it out, leaving a gap that's about that wide. You'll see that in a second. And then the Bermuda grass has to bridge that gap in order for it to grow again. So what I'll do later on is, after I've formed this little groove, then I can take my mechanical edger around and just trim it. And then I just reach in there with my rake and rake all of the stuff out of it, and it's perfectly fine for another 30 days. So as the temperatures get hotter, we see a lot more of this grass making its moves. It's warm now, so you can kind of start to see it popping up. Let's turn around and have a look. All right, there's the garden. There's my starts. See them all over there, just hanging out. A lot of broccoli and Swiss chard. We got some good stuff in there. There's my artichoke, onions in the foreground. Okay, now let's turn over here so you can see that edge I'm talking about. See it? See how nice and neat and clean cut this is? Did this last week and it's really, really good. I love it, I love it like this. I'll show you how it looks when we turn the corner. Now this is really easy to maintain and manage with my edging tool. All right, you can see it over here by my fruit plot. 
same situation. Got that little shadow line there. But you can see what I'm doing is I'm stopping the migration of this stuff. It can't possibly get into the garden if I've severed it there and basically cut a small trench. It's not enough to trip over. I'm not gonna stick my heel in it. I'm not gonna stick my toe in it. You know, there's already these um, uneven soil surfaces that exist when we garden. So we're already, you know, kind of watching out for things. Oh yeah, there's my lettuce. I love that igloo lettuce. Tell me in the comments, who likes igloo lettuce too? I love it, it's great. And artichoke. There we go. They're doing really well. I got my volunteer lettuce growing over there too. But anyway, back to this. So you can plainly see, this is slightly sloped. The water runs through it. You will see some seeds, you know, grass seeds, onion seeds, all kinds of seeds will fall in there and then they tend to germinate, but we're not growing crops in there. We're not even growing grass in there. And this is what we call a living edge, okay? And it's effective. So I suggest you give it a try. If not, stuff might just keep on coming into your garden. Let me go ahead and get you a view of what that tool looks like. 